Every day, two titans face off in a mad dash to move more than 25 million packages. Every second counts as a complex system of jaw-dropping automation. It's almost like a, a Willy Wonka type thing. Needs an army of trucks on the ground and a fleet of planes in the sky. It's the delivery giant versus the leader in overnight. In a race against time and each other. Coke and Pepsi is a great way to look at it. With billions at stake, which company can do it faster, cheaper, smarter, and keep up with an e-commerce revolution? I'm Brian Shackman, and tonight we take you inside the package war. UPS and FedEx deliver nearly six and a half billion packages a year, practically a package for every person on the planet. The 1977 Aircraft 265 Ramp Tower. FedEx made Memphis their home base, dubbing the 832-acre complex the Super Hub. FedEx has made Memphis International Airport the busiest cargo airport in America. UPS is also strategically located near the heart of America. Brown calls its mega complex Worldport. UPS chose Louisville, Kentucky as a hub because of location. Here, you're a two-hour plane flight from 75% of the United States. What's so special about this spot? CNBC went behind the scenes with both. That's what's known as a unit load device. To show you the amazing journey from this to this. UPS might be best known for its brown delivery trucks, but it's also the world's ninth largest airline. I'm inside a Boeing 757 that just came from Guadalajara, Mexico. They're bringing all the cans out to go into the world port for sorting. Sorting. It's what both hubs were built for, routing packages from one plane to another. The sort, as workers at both companies call it, is where you see the shipping magic at work. At Worldport, UPS can sort up to 416,000 packages an hour. And at night, a million. During a peak season like Christmas, 1.6 million packages. As for FedEx, it's not just a company, it's a verb. You mind FedExing those bad boys? Just a few minutes before 11 p.m. on a Monday at the Hub in Memphis, Tennessee for FedEx, and some of the 10,000 workers are streaming in for the night sort, which can handle up to 2 million packages in a single night. And as you can see, they're in winter gear because Memphis is expecting snow. It's right about midnight, and all the planes are starting to stream in. They have to get them all within a very tight window to make sure the sort goes off on time. This particular 777 came in from Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. Traveling to Paris, Mexico, and beyond, it's staggering to think that combined, the companies have about 90 billion in revenue. Especially when you consider both companies' humble beginnings. In 1907, Jim Casey founded the American Messenger Company in Seattle. By the time it was renamed the United Parcel Service in 1919, Men in Brown were delivering around 2,200 packages per day. In 1959, daily volume surged to 723,000, with each generation exponential growth. By 1982, UPS introduced Next Day Air Service, and volume hit 6.4 million. The volume just keeps growing. In 1973, former Marine and Vietnam vet Fred Smith found Federal Express. On its first night in business, delivering 186 packages. By year two, daily volume passes 10,000. 20 years later, shorter delivery times and a shorter name. The newly coined FedEx delivers nearly 2 million packages per day. In 1998, FedEx launches ground and home delivery, and by 2010, FedEx is up to 8 million packages. Today, when you combine the two delivery giants, it's almost 25 million packages a day. Back on the sword, it's easy to see where today's growth is. Internet retailing. Hewlett Packard, Dell, Walmart, Amazon. This is uh, one of our many areas. UPS's Mike Nepal runs Worldport, host to a nightly cascade from Amazon. How big are they to your business? They comprise a lot of our business. They're one of our strategic uh, shippers. How big? Big? We'll probably do about 20 to 40% of their volume here. In the air and on the ground. Reputations are on the line each and every night. We're taking a piece and trying to find a way 
to get it to his uh, home. So this is where the great sort happens. For four hours every night, each next day package travels the 155 plus miles of conveyor belt, getting bagged by zip code, apartment building, even large individual customers. These are going to Illinois. Tonight, Kabira Murray covers the letter C. Being a C person, you do a ton of Chicago. Yeah. What's the worst thing that can happen? You send it to the wrong place? Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. When we visited FedEx, it was Cyber Monday, and the intensity became more than a virtual headache. A snowstorm meant late arrivals and even more pressure inside the sort. None of the planes here can take off until the sort is complete and they're loaded to go. Honestly, it's about twice the freight, so I'd say it's about twice the stress. It is pretty, it's pretty intense. Chuck Bryson flips between the more than 250 cameras used to monitor and regulate the sort. See, when I extend that diverter, now I'm taking freight from two belts and putting it on the one. He should be done by now. Over 200 planes are waiting on the tarmac. It's 3 in the morning. What's going on in the command center? Okay. We're wrapping up our sword at this time. 40 minutes late. It wasn't a total smooth night, though, right? It was not. At what point in terms of lateness would it have made you nervous about getting things on time the next day? Well, this is pretty close to that boundary. With the first planes departing so late, distribution centers around the country have to move even faster to make their morning deadlines. But then again, employees are trained to expect every possible contingency. Well, not everyone. What's the strangest thing that's happened on these monitors based on what you've done? I think it might have to be the time that the uh, box of fresh Maine lobsters broke open <laughs> somewhere on the belt system. And 58-pound lobsters came straight up this belt. <laughs> people just scattered. They were smart there to grab and put in their jacket. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's lobsters on the loose or snow on the ground. Our customers don't care that it's sleeting and snowing in Memphis. They want their uh, package and they want it delivered on time. Coming up on Inside the Package Wars. Engineering speed with extreme automation. Go ahead, push it up. I'll tell you when to stop. Up, up, and away. Well, in my dreams, I'm actually inside a $13 million flight simulator belonging to UPS. They have eight of these 11-ton machines to keep their pilots certified. Trainer Cato Floro, himself a UPS pilot, shows me the ropes. You don't have to be too ginger with it. It's not your dad's Cadillac. <laughs> Besides preparing their 2,600 pilots to fly under almost any conditions, it simulates taxiways and UPS gates at airports worldwide. I just don't want to die. Okay. Okay, so There's I see the runway. runway straight up yeah. ahead, okay? Let's just say UPS did not offer me a job. I don't Terrain like that. ahead. Pull up. I do not like that. FedEx and UPS make massive investments in technology using NASA-like control centers and custom-built computer programs to manage traffic in the skies, both have one goal, solve weather and mechanical problems to get packages to their destination on time. At UPS, spare pilots and planes are at the ready to rescue deliveries that, if late, would cost between $5 and $30 a package. It adds up fast, considering every plane carries thousands of packages. UPS uses a technology called NextGen. It lands planes closer together, shaving minutes from flight times, and that means millions of dollars. And savings is why UPS uses technology to, as they put it, de-skill jobs, like loading delivery trucks. Before packages even arrive at the distribution center, UPS's preload assist system determines exactly where each one belongs and instantly blows loading info right onto the packages or on bigger ones. The device simultaneously scans the barcode and prints a loading code that tells workers exactly what truck to put it on and precisely where inside. UPS's chief information officer, Dave Barnes, shows us the company's global data center in Mawa, New Jersey. Computers here use advanced logarithms to issue drivers their daily instructions. Ten years ago, could you do that same thing? Now, 10 years ago, we used to do this manually. We would train a number of our workers to memorize the routes of our drivers. And on those routes, drivers are discouraged from making left turns because models show they add more wait time and traffic and increase the risk of accidents. Optimizing right turns over left, we save money 
and they have a safer workforce. For both companies, the barcode is key. At the FedEx Ground Hub in Memphis, belts move boxes at 500 feet per minute, and there's no need to slow down for scanning. The scan tunnel you see right here. Ken Spangler, CIO of FedEx Ground, explains. We're reading all six sides of the package. We're reading the barcodes on the bottom as well. We also do high-speed dimensioning, so we capture all the dimensions of the package. The packages come off the truck, and they're all clumped together. By the time they get through this line, they're single file, they're spaced out, and they're scanned. The average FedEx ground package is scanned 13 times. Once we unload it, we really don't want to touch it again until the load point. So basically, we're using all automation. They've even integrated scanners into gloves. Can I shake your bionic hand? Yes, yeah, you can. These are only the second set of hands that have touched these packages at the FedEx ground facility. And this process of loading up a truck happens more than 100,000 times throughout the entire FedEx network. While both companies have ways you can track a package in transit, FedEx's chief information officer, Robert Carter, shows us how they're not just tracking the package, they're tracking the contents as well, an innovation targeted at the biomedical industry. You actually insert it into the package. It can tell us where it is. It can tell us what temperature it is. It can tell us how fast it's moving. It can tell us whether or not light has entered into the package, which means it's been opened. Despite all the technology and innovation, the delivery is still the most important step. Two recent viral videos illustrate the point. For FedEx, it was a driver carelessly chucking a computer monitor over a fence. FedEx responded quickly. This goes directly against all FedEx values. But replacing the monitor for free and disciplining the employee can't offset the bad press. For UPS, it was an obscene gesture at a security camera. UPS says the seasonal employee has since been fired, but from the public backlash, it's clear that delivering packages and profits still requires a human touch. Coming up, pushing packages was just the beginning. See why UPS wants to grab hold of your smartphone. Lift. When it comes to last minute delivery, you might say UPS has skin in the game. Literally, human skin. What we have back here is some very time sensitive product. From Louisville, Kentucky, Mark Villa leads a team of UPS employees who need to keep a freezer at negative 103 degrees Fahrenheit to preserve a product made by Advanced Biohealing, a company based in La Jolla, California. What is it? A skin replacement therapy used in foot surgeries made from circumcised foreskin. We have minutes to remove it from our freezer and seconds to place it in the, um, in the shipper. It's shipped in a container UPS designed, layered with dry ice, and sent next day to operating rooms across the country. And if we do not maintain the integrity of the product from the freezer to the shipper, we're compromising that patient's outcome. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't want that to happen, ever. It's just one example of UPS expanding into healthcare. Housed in warehouses the size of three football fields, this is what UPS calls an adjacent business, meaning adjacent to their gigantic super hub they call Worldport. In Louisville, Kentucky alone, healthcare related adjacent businesses have a million square feet of FDA certified warehouse space. Everything from pain medication to parts for x ray machines, literally blocks from a runway, so if there's an emergency, they can get product out the door immediately. So it's one company you're dealing with, right from that source and manufacture all the way through to that retail store or doctor's office in the U.S. The commercials are ubiquitous, and UPS actually has a president of logistics. His name is Brad Mitchell, and his job is to take advantage of the ever-globalizing world. He saves companies money while making money for UPS. I get the snowsuit. One chilly freezer chamber after chamber after chamber at a time. It's four below Fahrenheit, ice packs everywhere. If you're a company that makes something that has to be stored at a particular temperature, UPS can do that. They bundle up a bunch of different companies that have the same needs, can ship all over the world, saving each company money. Within one building, we go from healthcare to high tech, and one major company that outsources to UPS is Sprint. Phones come from Kyocera, Motorola, and Asia. They're received, customized, packaged, and then shipped to businesses and individuals. This facility can manage five to 6,000 units per hour, all with UPS technology, all with UPS personnel. UPS is sorting, 
shipping and storage cut Sprint's warehousing costs by 30%. The shipping business is huge, but it isn't showing huge growth. Not the case with opportunities to do more for more companies. The investment community is saying, what's your next opportunity for growth? And we really saw that moving up the supply chain. The analyst community agrees and also sees a difference here between FedEx and UPS. Gets delivered. Or Dur covers both companies for Lazard Capital Management. It's a business in its youth globally. Uh, UPS does seem to have a bit of a lead there. You see how they're advertising. It is going to be the dominant way that the company markets itself uh, as it goes forward. It's more than shipping skin. It's reducing customs delays, processing returns, customer invoices, as well as what you see here, the do-it-all approach. Explain to me how big this business is within the framework of UPS. That's getting close to 20% of the total revenue base in the company. It's one of the priciest cars on the planet. And Brown actually has a hand in Bentley's business, too. We will handle anything from the smallest branded nut and bolt up to a, an engine. Bentley is based in Crewe, England. Since 1994, UPS has been their parts people for all of North America. Carl Norris manages their evolving relationship. We had a little issue with uh, windscreens. These are hard to ship because they're damage prone. We were able to design a special box that actually helps reduce these damages to near zero. Then there are what you might call partnerships of convenience. UPS says at least 140 companies have relocated their distribution facilities to Louisville, Kentucky, benefiting from what they call end of runway services. Zappos can take orders until 11.30 p.m. and still get the shoes to customers by 8 a.m. the next morning. Meanwhile in Memphis, FedEx is making huge strides in doing the very same thing. Pro Flowers is as close as possible to planes at FedEx's Superhub to service all those emergency flower orders. In perishables, speed is everything. Clark Howard helped create the strategy. So if an order comes in in another part of the country and it's too late to fulfill it, that's what this is for. Yeah, they're really the Pro Flowers facility here in Memphis, since it's right next to the FedEx hub, is really the safety net for all of our orders for fulfillment the next day. Now, did you have that in mind when you decided to open up a here? Absolutely. The amazing story of whether bovine heart tissue can make it from Australia to a U.S. lab to a patient in time for surgery. FedEx is also selling its heroic feats when it comes to healthcare logistics. What's in here? Well, these are samples that we would typically receive from, say, a clinical site. Lisa Jennings, CEO and president of Circwest Labs, is a cold-blooded shipper, literally. The company conducts lab work for clinical trials, and its proximity to the FedEx Superhub helps secure a recent deal with the American Heart Association. They kind of relaxed a little bit and thought, well, gee, you know, Memphis may really be the spot that we want to place this trial because of FedEx headquarters. FedEx looks like it will try and match UPS's adjacent business strategy. This facility, used to repair their own field scanners and equipment, is opening its doors to outside business. Carrie Pappas is president of FedEx Tech Connect. If you're a manufacturer of PCs or handheld devices, scanning equipment, um, servers, those kind of things, those would be definitely in, the, in our target audience for what we'd be looking for. Pappas admits FedEx is new to the concept. We have a handful of customers that we've just signed. Again, we we're probably four or five months in, so we're in our infancy at this point, but we're working hard. The delivery challenge is on. The package wars can get wet and wild, with the delivery giants clawing for the great PR that comes with the most unusual deliveries. FedEx created Pandemonium, delivering two giant pandas from China to Edinburgh, Scotland. The eight-year-old arrived on a Boeing 777 dubbed the Panda Express. But UPS had been there, done that over a decade earlier. Brown even called it the Panda Express when the company delivered a pair to the Atlanta Zoo. Only after the zookeeper signed for them, of course. FedEx got a feather in its cap for safely delivering nine bald eagles from the San Francisco Zoo to a sanctuary in Tennessee. And after the Gulf oil spill, 70,000 endangered sea turtle eggs were FedExed out of harm's way to Florida's Atlantic coast. Have a whale of a delivery? Both companies have handled that. The largest fish in the sea took flight with UPS when the company shipped two female 14-foot whale sharks from Taipei, Taiwan to Atlanta, Georgia. Not to be outswum, 
FedEx up the ante, shipping not one, but seven beluga whales. They needed a temporary vacation spot while Chicago's Shedd Aquarium was being renovated. PR events aside, these oversized deliveries require expertise, and both companies want you to see the big guys trust them to get the package there on time. No matter what's inside, millions of people rely on both brands. Every package is a personal.